Hi everyone and welcome to this short series where we're going to cover everything to do with widgets and the UMG editor. In this first episode we're going to introduce you to the UMG editor and how to create widgets and also how to manage that along with the canvas panel and the HUD class itself and how we use the HUD class in a full game. So let's jump in and take a look. So the first thing we're going to do is just take a look at widgets in general and explain what you're seeing in the widget editor or UMG. So to make a widget, you go into your content drawer and we'll just put it in the root folder here. You go down to user interface and you'll find widget blueprint. Just click on this and choose user widget. And you usually label it W underscore, then name it whatever you want. So we're going to have this one be the player head up display. And this is the widget editor. So a few things to first of all uh, familiarize yourself with. Uh, in the center, we've got our stage where we can design the look and feel of our widget in the area here. On the left hand side, we've got the palette. This is a collection of all the widgets that we can make our widget with. Um, so you've got text here, images, uh, there's lots in here. And everything that you make as well will also appear in here too. Below this, we've got the hierarchy. And in the hierarchy is where you'll be organizing and managing the structure of your widget. And then on the right hand side, we've got a details panel. Now this is a contextual, meaning it will change based upon what you've selected. Inside our widget area, we can also have debug options to see what it looks like on different types of screens and screen sizes. So let's get it started. The first thing we need to do is, and our player up display is put a panel in. So panels are basically containers which can contain and organize the widgets stored within them. So we typically, for head-up display, we'll use a canvas panel, which is a special type of panel which allows to have absolute positioning. So we can position an element anywhere we like on this panel um, uh, in whatever position we want. Unlike things like the horizontal box or vertical box, these uh, will store their contents sequentially, either horizontally or vertically. And there's many others too, which we'll go over and go through during the course of this series. So in the canvas panel, everything you add to this is called a canvas panel slot, and which is then given the position and alignment that we need. So for example, if I were to drag in an image and drag it into my canvas panel, what this has done is it's technically created a panel slot and then it's added the image into that slot. And we can see that in action over here on the details panel. So when I've got the image selected, it says at the top here, slot, canvas panel slot. So this is the details about the slot that our image is inside of. This includes positioning, the size, the anchors, alignment, all of that stuff. Underneath this, there are all the properties that belong to the image itself. So this is quite common for most panels is that they'll be stored in a slot. So this is where you'll find those settings up here. So as you can see, as I move it around, the position X to position Y will change. And you may be wondering, what is this thing over here in the corner? This is the anchor. So in a canvas panel, anchors are used to store the position relative point. So this is saying the position X is 396. But from what? Well, what is it measuring it from? Well, in this case, it's measuring it from this anchor here, the top left. So as I move it further away, the position goes up higher, move it closer, it gets lower. But the anchor can also be moved. We can move it ourselves, like so. But what is far better to do is to go to your anchors option and choose any of the preset the, uh, settings that you have available to you. So you can see you've got top left, Middle top, top right, center, center left, center right, bottom left, bottom middle, and bottom right. And then we've got the ones that are stretching the span of the screen in horizontal and vertical, as well as a full screen as well. So this image here we'll put in the top right hand corner. And I could do that by clicking on the top right there. And now I could reposition it however I want. Now, one thing that's quite useful to do is when you're choosing an anchor, if you hold down shift and control, 
As you can see, Shift and Control are going to update the alignment and position to match the anchor being selected. So if I had done the middle one with these two keys selected, you can see it's moved the anchor to the middle of the image. And everything's been aligned to the center. So 0 0.5 in the alignment. Position is now 0, 0. And it's all correct. But as I say, I want to put this in the top right. So I hold down Control and Shift. Click top right. And off it goes. And I usually will offset this in the position by like negative 100. Negative 100. Oh, 100, sorry, not negative 100. Okay, and there's our image. So why are anchors important? Well, this is because when we're making games, we're usually making them for various different types of screens. This is especially true if you're making a mobile game. Now we can preview what different screen sizes look like on the UMG by going to screen size, and you can see a load of presets are made for us. So if you want to see what this looks like on an iPhone, you can see here it's keeping it in that top left hand corner, uh, top right hand corner, sorry. Go back to an iPad Air 2. I can see what it looks like there. If the anchor's not set correctly, so let's say it's set to the top left here, and I change the screen size, you can see how it's now clipping off the edge of the screen, and that's because it's being measured to the top left. So this is why we want to keep try and make sure our anchors are matching where we want our objects to appear in relation to the screen. So if I want this image to be always in the top right, I just want to make sure that the anchor is set to top right. And offset it. Like so. But let's reset the, t uh, the screen here. Like so. So that's the basics. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through and add this onto our game screen. So we're going to compile and save this and close this down. And we're going to go to our player blueprint. And in here you've got a player controller, game mode, and a player character. Typically speaking, the best place for the HUD elements are going to be the HUD class, which is part of the controller. So you can put it on the controller if you want directly, or you can use a HUD class, which is its own special class where it helps you to compartmentalize where you want things to appear. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to create a HUD class. So I'm going to right click, blueprint class, and I'm going to go into all classes and search for HUD and choose HUD class. And we'll call this one HUD default. Now to assign that, we're gonna to go to our game mode and we can go to the HUD class here and change the game modes HUD class to HUD default. Now, the reason why I say putting the HUD is really useful because let's say we're making a game where we're walking around, but then we get in the vehicle I'm going to swap the HUD over to show vehicle HUD. We can just change the HUD class. Yeah, so it helps you compete that all in one place. So in the HUD, we're going to open this up. And it functions just like many other blueprints. Uh, so we're going to go into the event graph. And on begin play, I'm going to drag out and do create widget. And what this function does is it will create the widget in memory. Now, it doesn't add it to the screen or anything like that. It just creates it in memory. So you just choose which one you want to uh, create. I'm going to choose our head-up display. And if you're doing a split-screen game, you do need to identify which player controller is going to have this HUD. Uh, but obviously, if you're not doing split-screen, you don't have to worry about that because it's just one player. Now, when it comes out of here, you're going to get a return value. This is the actual object that is made. And it's good practice to just store this as a variable. Reason being means that you have now got a direct access link to that HUD. So you can access it and change things about it or, you know, whatever you want to do with it. So I'm going to call that one HUD. So as I said, this is just stored in memory. It doesn't actually do anything to the screen yet. To add it to the screen, we're going to drag out from our HUD and go add to... And you've got player screen and viewport. If you're doing... A multiplayer game that's local, a like split screen, you may want to do add to player screen. But we're going to do add to viewport typically by default, that's all you need to worry about. One of the bonus options you have for add to viewport is the Z order. So Z order dictates which widget is on top of other widgets. So if you leave it at zero, what it's going to do is it'll just add the latest widget on top. 
But if we wanted to force it to be on bottom or on top, we can just change the Z order. And if you hover over it, always use it to remind you that the higher number, the more on top this widget will be. So if I want it to be like always on top, I just change it to like 10, for example. It doesn't matter what number you pick, as long as it's higher, it'll put it on top. Okay. So we'll leave that at zero. Compile and save that. And now I hit play. Our widget is now on the screen. You can see that image is now displaying the top right hand corner. So the game mode is calling the player controller and the player controller is then spawning in the HUD class. So if you ever want to get hold of the HUD class, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is let's say go into our, uh, let's go into our player character. And let's say we want to manipulate the HUD class from our player character. All you got to do is get the player controller first. And then from that, you get the HUD there. And you probably have to cast that to your particular HUD. So HUD default here. We get cast to default HUD. And then I can access whatever I want in here. So if I want to access this variable, um, I can do so like that. Okay, so you get to the HUD class through the player controller. And if you want to do, as I said in my example earlier, like get into a vehicle and change the HUD completely, all you do is get the player controller, drag out and do set HUD, and you'll see sign a client set HUD. You do this and you choose the HUD you want to choose. And what that will do is it will destroy the previous one and spawn it in and run the HUD class uh, anew. So there you go, we've now covered the basics of a HUD and HUD class and using widgets. So in the next episode, I'm going to go through and show you how we set up bindings and talk about the different types of bindings that we have for widgets. So we can change widgets based upon what the player is doing in the game. You can watch our next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you so much to all the patrons and YouTube members for the continued support in the channel. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.